I want to talk to you a little bit about context. So yesterday, Abby made the announcement that uh, we, we renamed our, our uh, Elastic Runtime to Application Runtime to kind of help be more descriptive. We've also um, really embraced as a community the Container Runtime as a way to think about running and, and having that, that Kubernetes container abstraction, but ensuring that there's a, there's a high degree of operational um, value to it. You know, but one of the things that, that I think we didn't spend enough time on yet, I want to right now, and that's the question of when do I use one or the other, right? It's not a choice of I'm using one platform and everything should go on it. Right? We, we live in the real world, and there are different abstractions that are valuable for different reasons. There are different use cases that fit um, more appropriately in a Kubernetes cluster. And there, there are different scenarios where things fit more appropriately in the Cloud Foundry application runtime. So I can't tell you what those scenarios are. Right? And it really is a question of what's the right tool for the right job, and can you have a great experience operationally ensuring that these, these platforms are alive? Um, but what I can tell you is that there's clearly some emergent commonality between the different enterprises that I've spoken with that are pairing Kubernetes with Cloud Foundry app runtime. Now, we all know the CF push experiences for the developers, the custom applications on the application runtime side. And the container runtime side, some of the things that I've seen are, number one, a lot of independent software vendors, or ISVs, they're shipping their software to companies as Docker container images or OCI container images. So that's a great use. You can land it into Kubernetes. There's other examples where there are data services that are actually born of the container era. Right? They're designed to work in Kubernetes, so they should run in Kubernetes. There are other examples where you have a older application, you know, traditional application. Some might even say le it's legacy, and you know, it was from last week. Um, but a legacy application, it's designed a bit as a monolith. You could package that in a Linux container, and if you choose, you could choose to run that on a uh, Kubernetes cluster with the Cloud Foundry container runtime. So we're going to continue to see as a, as a community in, in, your, in your organizations as we pair these two abstractions together and make them continue to make them work even more seamlessly. We're going to evolve as an industry. We're going to learn what's right at one abstraction versus the other abstraction. So kind of with that in mind, I, I want to invite someone up on stage who's going to give us a walkthrough of an example of where we're pairing the Cloud Foundry application runtime with some machine learning that's running on top of Kubernetes. So if I could have Emma from SAP join me. All right. All right. Yeah, let's go up here. All right, well, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, so why don't Hi, we start everyone. with, can you tell everybody what you do at SAP? OK, I am a developer in SAP. I work with the um, SAP Leonardo Machine Learning Foundation. And uh, I work with open source technologies like uh, Cloud Foundry oh. and Kubernetes. So today, I'm going to be telling you how we do machine learning in SAP. Great, great. So you, you brought a diagram that you wanted to walk through. Yeah, uh, but before that. Before that, here, yeah. why don't I give you this? So I will kind of give an overview of what we do at SAP. And uh, we in SAP, we are actually interested in two business use cases. These include uh, software as a service, and I'll say container as a service. So we have uh, employed leading technologies to help us deliver our business use cases. With respect to software as a service, we have, uh, would like to deploy intelligent business applications to the um, cloud environment. And uh, because of these, we have decided to use uh, SAP's cloud platform, which is Cloud Foundry, to help us deliver this uh, or run these 12-factor-like apps. On the other hand, we have customers who would like to train their models, or they would like to run inference against their models. So we have employed Docker technology to containerize their models and use Kubernetes engine to run the resulting containers. 
The idea is that the applications which are uh, running in the cloud are being powered by the models which are running in Cloud Foundry. So a look at our architectural diagram will really drive this message home. You see we have uh, different tiers. We have three tiers, and these include the application tier, the compute tier, and the persistent tier. The, um, Cloud Foundry hosts the application tier, and the components of the application tier include tenant onboarding, our APIs, and our use case logic. Uh, for tenant onboarding, we leverage on the security features of Cloud Foundry to help us bring our customers to use our platform. And uh, for our APIs, these are what enterprise applications or developers can use to consume what we offer in our platform. The business logic is uh, different for different kind of models. And for instance, you can have the business logic for image classification, or you can have business logic for some linear regression. And uh, this is the gateway to the compute here. Now, the compute here is where all the heavy lifting is done. It is actually composed of two different kinds of infrastructures. They include the inference infrastructure and uh, then the training infrastructure. For the inference infrastructure, we can uh, host custom models. This means uh, customers can bring their models to us, for instance, our models, and they want us to serve it. We can host that. We also host uh, um, open source models like uh, TensorFlow. For instance, we have the inception model, which is currently running our TensorFlow server. Can, can you maybe tell everybody what TensorFlow is, for those of them that might not know what okay. it is? OK, TensorFlow is TensorFlow. <laughs> anyway, TensorFlow. <laughs> That's the best answer I've ever heard. <laughs> TensorFlow is TensorFlow, clearly. What do TensorFlow I know? TensorFlow <laughs> is an open source machine learning library yeah. that uh, has, is from Google. Yeah. So. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, we also have uh, the, the um, like I said, we have the training infrastructure. And um, this training infrastructure is characterized by long running jobs. Usually we have jobs that could run for one week or even more. And, uh, the, and, these, and these kind of jobs, they, uh, they require massive volumes of data. And uh, these are, I'm talking about data which is in the gigabyte or terabyte range. And because of these, we have taken measures to bring the data closer to processing why training is going, going on by way of um, data caching. We um, uh, also have employed NVIDIA GPUs in order to make training efficient. And uh, the idea is that after training is uh, completed, it is uh, uploaded into the model repository, which is in the persistent layer. And uh, uh, thereafter, uh, containers which wishes to serve this model can download it and use it for, for inference. To drive this message home, I will demonstrate uh, a specific use case of, uh, of how we use Cloud Foundry tool as a gateway to our machine learning services. Uh, in this particular use case, I, I am a, I'm a developer, and I have trained my own model, but I would like to use Cloud Foundry, and I would also like to use Kubernetes to, to, to deploy my model and to run drive inference against my model. In, in particular, when we watch this, everybody pay attention to the developer experience, right? Because you're going to see the CF command line tool actually has been expanded with a plugin, which interacts with the machine learning system. Yeah. So um, as a developer, my first steps will be to uh, subscribe to the um, machine learning services that we have currently in Cloud Foundry. So maybe we can roll the, oh, there yeah. it comes. And so uh, after subscribing, I, yeah, I create an instance of my service, that, uh, of, of uh, the service of the machine learning service, fill in all the relevant data. And because I would like to, I would like to um, use this model in my laptop, I generate, I create service keys. And okay, at this moment we are still uh, the instance is being, being is being created. And cr I click on my new instance. 
All right? And I generate service keys. The, this service keys gives me uh, credentials that I can use in my local computer to assess uh, the application, uh, assess Cloud Foundry. So I have what I can use to identify myself and the APIs that I can communicate with uh, if I want to use it for, uh, to deploy my, uh, my uh, models. So the next thing, we have developed a, a, a Cloud uh, Foundry plugin which, that has different kinds of uh, APIs. I, can, I have uh, deploy, describe, undeploy, and upload. So I have my, in my file system, I have uh, my, my model, and I upload it to the model repository. After it's told me that I'm successful, the next thing I would like to, um, at, at the moment, I would like to de deploy it. This, this is an asynchronous process. So there has to be some wait time, OK? And, uh, it gives me response, or it gives me notification when I describe to tell me uh, at this moment the, the model is still being uploaded. So at this mo you see it's pending. The state of the model is pending. And how long does it normally take? A uh, few seconds, depending on how large the model is. And it looks like a drive. Now, now it's succeeded. So at this point, I can drive inference against my model. And uh, this is the host and the pods. So here, this is an example of an application in the cloud, and already deployed in the cloud, and we are driving like an uh, image classification request. Oh, that's in. a cute dog. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the results comes. And so this is it. This is how we do uh, machine learning in SAP. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it. Yeah. So that was kind of cool.